And uh, one of the things that we've learned going through this that is absolutely true, guys, remember this, for every person that comes in the building this morning, their perception of what happens today will be their reality. Doesn't matter what really happens here today, what matters is how they perceive what happened here today. Whatever they see, whatever they feel when they leave this place today, that's going to be their reality of what happened in this place. So one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure that every person that comes in the building today perceives the love of Christ at all costs. That they perceive the move of His Spirit, that they perceive the moving of His glory, that they perceive how much every person in this building loves them, how much we appreciate they, them being here. And remember today, they don't have to come. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Every person that's going to show up today is going to be here because they want to be, most of the most part. And uh, so when they get here, let's cause them to perceive that we love them absolutely beyond measure, that we are overjoyed that they took the time out of their life to show up and be here, and that we really do want them to come back and we want them to experience the presence of the Lord. If we do everything in love today, remember we say all the time, love in the middle, love in the beginning, love in the end. If we do that, everything else will work out wonderfully this morning. As we're going through talking about perception, remember this, your mouth will absolutely change their perception. So we want to be very careful and always keep in our mind that negativity is a poison. So be very, very careful. Uh, don't talk about your brother. Don't talk about your neighbor. Um, you know, something's going on and, and you're not real happy with it. Be very careful how you present that today. Because remember, ears are listening. And again, their perception will be their reality. Always, always operate in love. No bitterness, no strife. Just love each other. And as we do that this morning, everything will go great. The people will come in and perceive that we have a spiritual maturity here at Bell's Chapel Assembly of God, and that's absolutely what we want, them, we want them to do. To come in and say, I have found a place where if I'm hurting, if I'm broken, I need help. I've found a people that will love me, and they will embrace me, and I can find my help there. So, with that said this morning, there's a scripture in Psalm chapter 27, verse 8, where David was, pray, was praying, and he said, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Wow. God had said to him, Seek my face. And David's response is, your face, Lord, I will seek. And I want to ask you this question this morning. Whenever God manifests, why does God manifest to some and not to all? Why does God choose certain places to manifest his presence? Why will he manifest here in this church this morning and this church tonight and not so much? Why will some Christians today have a nominal, dry, non-experiential move today? Why will some places have a great move of his glory and other places not have a great move of his glory? And I want to remind you that the reason is a spiritual receptivity. As saints of God, member ministers and heroes of faith, God has anointed us here because we are receptive to his spirit. And I want to remind you, my heroes of faith, when the spirit begins to move today, whenever his face begins to be revealed, he will only pour out more and more as we cry out, my God, it is your face I seek. Whenever God said to David, seek my face. The reason David received that anointing and his, that relationship with God is not because of anything special in his DNA, not anything special in his genealogy. It was what was special in his response. God said, seek my face. And David said, your face will I see. I long to be with you. I long to see you. I long to embrace you. I long to feel the moving power of your spirit. And because of David's response, because of his spiritual receptivity, God poured out an anointing on him like no other man yeah. ever had. Yeah. And I'm looking out at my heroes of faith and my soldiers well armed this morning. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, each and every one of you have a hunger in your heart. Down deep inside of you, there is that heartbeat of God that says, seek my face. And down deep inside of you, you're saying, my God, your face will I seek. I'll remind you, it was Caleb and Joshua, only two out of the twelve. Who whenever God revealed his glory in Canaan said let's take up arms and rush in there. The other ten said no in fear we will not go. But those two saw the glory of God. 
And those of you sitting here today, my heroes of faith and my soldiers well armed, you are the Joshua's and Caleb's of this generation. Amen. Those who will hold the sword in your hand and say, we are well able to go into the presence of our king. And you're the ones who will rush in and find the presence of God in a way that nobody else will. So I want to encourage you today, my heroes of faith, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Get your heart opened up yeah. and say, I refuse to stand at the mouth of a Mount Sinai with the rest of the world and point in fear and say, I will not go, but I will be like Moses. When I see the glory of God on the mountain, I will rush into it. Though he slay me, I will rush into the glory of my king and find him in a way that nobody else even wants. I'm going to find his face. I'm longing for his presence and his power. And I know that's the heart of each and every one of you. So today we're going to get together. We're going to circle up and pray. We're going to be in one mind and one accord. And we are going to seek his face. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Let's have church. Father, I pray.